Prem Maniar is um, with NIDEC SVTCL, and he wants to share with us some details around a MEMS RF hybrid probe solution. So Karem is responsible for working uh, in the engineering team on various product developments and enhancement projects. He's, he has experience in several designs for probes and software and analytical equipment. Uh, he's a gra graduate of Mumbai University in India and Arizona State University holding bachelor's of science and master's degree in mechanical engineering. Thank you, Karan. Thank you, Dave. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, like uh, some of the other panelists kind of uh, explained uh, some of the few challenges uh, with this fast growing market in AI or RF or uh, even automotive industry, I think uh, there has been a great increase in demand for uh, high power uh, consumption uh, chips. And with high power, you know, there obviously comes uh, like high current and then high temperature as well uh, applications. And uh, <clears throat> this is where uh, you know, like uh, Gamal yesterday was kind of explaining some of the uh, uh, challenges that they face on the substrate side, or Erwin was kind of explaining some of the challenges on the uh, die side, and uh, and Dave, you kind of explained some of the challenges on the tester platform uh, side uh, when it comes to high current and dealing with uh, burning probes per se, or, uh, or or high current and a high temperature application, uh, and that's where uh, you know we uh, come in as a probe card company where we kind of provide a very unique and a uh, proven solution using our uh, customizable uh, MEMS technology uh, to uh, help some of those, uh, uh, those concerns and meet some of those demands uh, of high power, high consumption, uh, kind of like a, a piece of the puzzle in this whole entire semiconductor test environment, uh, which is acting as an interface between our tester and, and the wafer. <clears throat> So uh, what is our, uh, basically our MEMS technology? It's, it's kind of a three-piece uh, MEMS probe and uh, the, uh, the dead plunger like we see here uh, has different uh, tip shapes depending on the application like a solder bump application or a uh, flat pad application. You can uh, have crown tip, flat tip, pointed tip. Uh, also, uh, the, the spring right here is kind of uh, made of a, using a photolithographic method and it's kind of a uh, gold plated internally uh, to kind of give a better uh, electrical contact. And then uh, the, the plunger right here, we call that as a uh, PCB plunger, uh, which, uh, which kind of acts as an interface between our probe and the space transformer. Uh, now the the interesting part about this technology is is basically these uh, the probe is always uh, preloaded to the space transformer, so you always have a constant electrical contact with the space transformer. Uh, <clears throat> in addition to that, the way this uh, MEMS probe is made uh, with photolithographic method, it's actually so precise that we it helps us achieve a better alignment and planarity, uh, and also uh, uh, better yield on the wafer at, at the first pass. Now, like we kind of see here, uh, the probe is basically a uni uniaxial probe, and it's a kind of a straight vertical probe, uh, which kind of gives us an added advantage uh, in terms of uh, uh, building our uh, MEMS probe bed using automated process, uh, resulting in you know saving time and and reducing some of our lead times to some of our uh, customers. The other uh, part of our this uh, of the MEMS probes is also that you know we can basically customize this technology uh, depending on the end user's need. We can make it uh, bigger in order to meet uh, higher CCC requirements. We can make it smaller. And the interesting fact is that when we when we kind of move around the diameter to make it bigger or smaller to meet the high current requirements, uh, you know we can actually uh, maintain the same exact length. Uh, such that and and also the same force, uh, so that you know when we're when we put all of it together, you can basically achieve the same force at the same over travel, irrespective of what kind of pin technology it is as well. The other added advantage is you can shorten the length of the spring in order to meet some of the you know uh, less tip depth requirements, and then we also have a uh, you know added example of rotation and non rotation version of these springs, which kind of uh, helps us. Uh, achieve uh, you know, different applications uh, in the nickel palladium industry or, or things like that. <clears throat> uh, 
So uh, here is a uh, one of uh, example of uh, a use of our of our MEMS technology where uh, the the end user actually had a uh, high current requirement. So initially, when we built this uh, probe card, we actually built uh, our entire probe card with uh, with a smaller diameter pins. Uh, and then uh, when uh, then you know we had uh, one of our uh, customers come back and tell us that uh, the the probes are actually uh, burning. And and Dave gave one of the good example yesterday, kind of explaining how you know clamp current and things like that also uh, impact some of these uh, burning probes and uh, sometimes uh, how you know even if you're climbing you can uh, you know sometimes see even burning probes so uh, when I went ahead and looked at the probe design as a uh, you know we, we found that there is a room uh, and the pitch kind of allows us to kind of design a bigger wire especially for power and IO pins uh, so, so that they can pass high current through it so like we see here in the photo right here and right here so this is basically our uh, 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 the power pins which is a bigger diameter probe and has a better uh, current carrying capacity uh, and then the ground probes are kind of small probes uh, which uh, kind of has a less current through it and uh, this uh, this is how you know we we Kind of uh, pursue a solution of a hybrid pro bed in order to meet some of this uh, challenges of high current and and high temperature applications. <clears throat> Now, uh, some of the audiences uh, sitting here might also be some of our customers and they might be wondering, hey, what, what happens when you have uh, 20,000 more parallelism? You know, obviously in this industry, parallelism is the key because it kind of helps save time, valuable time in production. You can save, you can probe uh, more dyes in a single touchdown. And so like we see here, uh, this uh, example that I kind of showed before was a high ping count case with a uh, 20,000 pin counts. And like we see here, all the uh, all the blue probes right here are a high current probes and uh, power probes. And then the red ones right here are kind of the small uh, ground probes uh, in, in between those power probes. <clears throat> so now what this does is we can uh, basically using our technology design a probe uh, both the probes are, are of the same length, uh, they have the same force, and they uh, at the same over travel. And what that does is you can kind of easily replicate for uh, multi parallelism. So in the end, uh, we have a uh, the, the requirement for the customer was a by four, but we can go uh, by 16 or by 32, depending on, you know, the needs, uh, the needs of the end user. And this, <clears throat> this kind of technology kind of helped uh, solve a customer issue where they kind of were seeing burnt probes and using the bigger wire allowed it to pass higher current through it and, and, and basically uh, help solve some of the uh, burning probe issues. <clears throat> So the, this is uh, the, the previous example with the hybrid technology also uh, kind of uh, brought, brought into light basically how uh, you know we had a multi-dot and how that multi-dot probe uh, basically gave us an opportunity to have a multi-dot MLOs on it. So this uh, what this basically did is uh, our customer had a, a small uh, single dot uh, substrate MLOs and they said, well, you know, it takes a lot of time and, and, and cost to kind of build one big MLO for a by four. So what we said, as well, you can give us four of your uh, substrate MLOs and we can just reflow all four of them together uh, on, uh, on the same pro bed. And what that did basically uh, was it, it helped the customer save some cost and money. And then with one test on, they were able to uh, test more dyes irrespective of how many MLOs were kind of uh, reflowed uh, on the top of the <clears throat> pro bed. So uh, previously, uh, I kind of mentioned that you know, our MOMS uh, probe technology are flexible in a way that uh, we can uh, achieve a same force and in our travel. So in that example of the probe ed, uh, we kind of performed a VCF measurement, which we call as our uh, force measurement amongst different zones of the probe ed uh, in order to measure the force uh, after we actually build the probes. Uh, what, the, what this graph uh, over here kind of shows us is that from this zone, when we measured the uh, uh, measured the two different kinds of probes in the same probe bed at same over travel, basically the, the graphs are overlapping and it has even a good hysteresis curve, which, which kind of indicates right here uh, that it gives us a, uh, that irrespective of the size of the probe, uh, we basically are able to achieve the same force on the pads on the customer end uh, uh, at the same over travel and which kind of uh, helps uh, the customer not worry about using a different kinds of probes in the same probe ad in, in a form of a hybrid technology. And, and that's the best part of our MEMS probes and the way we can customize it to achieve this kind of a, a solution. <clears throat> 
right here on the top, uh, we see that uh, we basically see the, uh, the CCC of the probe. And uh, like the P90 is our smaller diameter probe and the P120 is kind of a bigger and P147, it goes bigger all the way. And basically uh, these, the, the P90 and the P120 uh, have the same length and the same force. Uh, the, uh, but what we see here is now you get a better current, like the P120 gives us a uh, 1.2 amps of current. <clears throat> and uh, similarly, the P90 is a smaller wire diameter, so it kind of gives us a 900 milliamps of CCC, and then P147 gives 1.5 amps. And similarly, if the pitch allows, we can go all the way up to uh, even more bigger wire sizes, which gives us the capability of uh, having around 2.7 amps of uh, current through our probe, depending upon the pitch of the customer. Uh, and, and basically, in the end, all of these probes have the same over travel and same force. So the customer did not worry about the pad damage with the bigger size probe or any concerns regarding uh, those, those things are not, not any concern for, the, for our end users as well. And then what it does in the end is it kind of uh, uh, helps better, uh, helps prevent the burning probes issue, gives a better CCC on the power probes and, uh, and also uh, uh, acts very well in, in, on the under temperature controlled environment. <clears throat> Uh, so CCC, uh, we uh, like I showed on our previous slide. I think uh, CCC is, is kind of the current uh, is the current carrying capacity of our uh, probes. And the question is how how do we measure our CCC uh, of the probe, and how do we determine what's what's the CCC of our of our probes? Uh, we measure the CCC of our probes uh, with, as per the ISMI um, standards. And basically, uh, what we do is uh, uh, when we see that there's a twenty percent reduction in the force, uh, that's what we uh, uh, we call it the uh, CCC of our probe. Uh, uh, and the way we kind of measure that is we pass the current through the probe uh, uh, for two minutes and then we uh, uh, and then we measure the force after 10 seconds of, of halt and then we measure the uh, CCC. That kind of gives us the current carrying capacity and if the force is reduced by 20% at, at that current, then that's kind of the current carrying capacity of our probes. <clears throat> Karam, there's a number of quick questions here, uh, specifically around the pitch possible with the various probes and the type of contacting you can make, whether to bumps or pads with each of them, if possible. Uh, sure. So, so those are uh, really good questions. So the, the the pitch of the probe. So the way we kind of design our probe eggs is uh, once we get some device information from the customer, we analyze the pitch of each and every pad. And depending on that pitch, we kind of use the, depending on the pitch and the current requirement, we determine that, you know, maybe we want to use a hybrid probe ed because some of the pads have a, a lower pitch capability. And I think we go all the way up to uh, three, uh, 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 the uh, the biggest pitch that we can go is uh, is our P300, which does uh, uh, 300 micron pitch, uh, uh, all the way down to a 60 micron pitch. Uh, so we can kind of use uh, you know the uh, uh, P80, P70, like those are 70, 80 micron pitch probes in in conjunction with the 200 micron pitch probe if the pitch allows us to do so uh, to kind of achieve those uh, requirements. <clears throat> and sorry, if I may, what was the uh, second question, Dave? Sorry, I have to unmute. Um, whether you can contact bumps, pads, pillars, et cetera. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's uh, another interesting question. Uh, we had one of our applications where we built a hybrid probe bed where we were actually able to uh, probe a bump in the pad by using the probes in the same probe bed. So yeah, the 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 short answer is yes, we can we can do that. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the probe bed optimization. So now, uh, like uh, uh, like this test says, you know, when we uh, have high power, uh, when we have uh, high power consumption chips and there is high CCC, it's like too hot to handle. And also, there's a high temperature involved in there. So in order to do that, uh, you know, Dave some some kind of gave a previously very good presentation about you know how the different ceramics and how the different CTE uh, kind of helps us uh, achieve. Uh, you know, the ideal heat dissipation and the heat flow. Uh, uh, flow. So what we do is when we uh, are in the design phase, uh, we, uh, we kind of uh, perform a simulation on our probes. 
uh, depending on our probe at stack up and depending on the, uh, uh, the and, and analyze those different kind of ceramic materials and, and things like that to see which one is one of the most optimal solution uh, for heat dissipation and what kind of gives us a uh, better current. So for example, like we see here, uh, depending on our probes, uh, we have a, uh, you know, four ceramic uh, materials here, which are different kinds of ceramic. And we, the first four graph right here on the top uh, kind of evaluates this four guide plate stack up uh, where we have different ceramic materials and then we play with uh, with some of the gaps in between this material. And that's another advantage that our straight probe gives us is we can kind of uh, move around some of these probe at stack up uh, in a way that we can uh, optimize in order to achieve better heat dissipation. And like we see here, that if you were to look here, the graph A with, with, with one kind of ceramic and, and one kind of gap uh, in between 300 to 350 C uh, temperature, uh, range, it kind of gives us around 600 amps of uh, current. Uh, but if we were to go back and redesign that probe bed with, 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 uh, with the same kind of ceramic, but having uh, adding another ceramic plate in there and then reducing some of the gap, like we see here, uh, it kind of allows the better heat dissipation of the uh, through the probes. And what that does is at that example, the graph right here kind of shows us that for that same, just by adding and moving around some of the gaps, what that does is basically it gives us 800 amps of uh, 800 milliamps of current uh, at, at the same temperature. So that's uh, basically a, a simulation tool that we kind of use to uh, to simulate some of these probe ed designs for, for high current and high temperature applications uh, to in order to achieve uh, a better heat dissipation and thus giving us a better current even at higher uh, temperatures. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, we we kind of discussed uh, the previously about the usage of hybrid probe bed and and using that hybrid probe bed giving us a capability to pass high current and what that does it also gives us a uh, capability to achieve a better impedance match and also uh, uh, achieve uh, get, uh, get us better low roll reflection loss uh, at higher speeds and also a better transmission loss. So if we were to play with the ceramics, like I kind of showed in the previous slide, the material of the ceramics, and then also a better heat dissipation, uh, depending upon the gap in between the ceramics, uh, with a good decay and a high uh, with a with a low decay material, uh, we basically can also achieve uh, similar performance uh, and uh, at a higher speeds uh, and also help reduce a reflection loss and get us achieve a uh, better impedance matching. <clears throat> So uh, some of us might wonder what is an impedance match. It's basically a uh, function of, of the uh, capacitor and the inductor. So like we see here, impedance, uh, basically it's kind of a uh, square root of the uh, inductance and the capacitance. And basically the, some of the inductance and capacitance uh, are from the probes and then, the, uh, and then also the ceramic and the gap in between the ceramics help us control some of those resistances to achieve a better impedance match. <clears throat> So like we see here, the previous example that I was kind of uh, showing before, the same example uh, that has kind of a 180 micron uh, pad pitch. And what uh, basically we uh, kind of ran that same probe at, at uh, high speed by using one kind of uh, probe technology. Uh, and what that did was uh, at higher speeds, uh, we were getting a reflection loss of around minus 10 dB. Uh, and lower the reflection loss is, is always better. So uh, what we did was when we built a hybrid probe bed for the same customer in order to achieve a uh, you know better uh, uh, better CCC requirement and also uh, at a higher temperatures uh, we built a probe bed where uh, we used a bigger uh, probe and a small probe in the same probe bed and what that basically did from this graph we see it is is at 10 uh, 10 gigahertz uh, the reflection loss basically reduced all the way to minus 20 db from minus 10 to minus 20 and always lower ref reflection loss is better uh, because then that also helps us achieve impedance match as well <clears throat> And basically, so what our hybrid probe does is when you use a bigger wire because of the pitch capability right next to a smaller wire, uh, what it basically does is it brings your ground probe uh, very close to the, to the power probes. And thus, the closer the grounding to the power probes at higher speeds, you know, that, that kind of helps us uh, achieve a better reflection loss and transmission losses uh, uh, at higher speed. Uh, this uh, and the ground, uh, this like here, like we see here, the, the, the ground probe is kind of very close right here to the <clears throat> power probe. 
the uh, the ground probe, there is another way uh, that we can achieve. So if you want to even uh, go with a higher speed uh, and in order to get ground closer to the signal probe, then we uh, then we actually uh, use our uh, coaxial uh, probe beds. Uh, we basically, what that does is it kind of brings your ground probe, like you see here, the, the, the shields, the grounding shields is very closer to your actually power probes. And what that does, uh, it uh, basically helps us achieve even lower reflection loss at, at even higher speeds than, than 10, uh, than, than 10 gigahertz. <clears throat> we, we, we optimize our probe bed stack up uh, and we control the gap in between the stack up and also the different ceramics uh, to achieve those uh, combinations. So when we are in the design phase, uh, we perform uh, both electrical, thermal and mechanical simulations to kind of uh, optimize our ideal stack up in order to achieve some of these uh, requirements. <clears throat> So, um, like we uh, like we see here, uh, the uh, what does uh, what the shield kind of does around these probes is uh, when you kind of shield these uh, when you shield these probes, uh, you bring the shields very closer to the power probes, and uh, basically we perform a simulation. So the blue graph right here is basically without the shields, and then the red one is with the shield. Uh, and then the dotted line that you see here is basically our, our, our tail side of the probe uh, and, and the solid line is the tip side of the probe. So, uh, so we ran a simulation by using a bigger wire uh, without the shield. And then we used a smaller probe uh, with the shield. And what that kind of gave us is as you go all the way up to 40 gigahertz in speed, uh, there is a lot of noise in the transmission when you do not have, uh, when you use actually a bigger probe, but then uh, there's some noise in the transmission uh, losses here, but when we use a smaller probe with shielding of with the ground shielding around it, what that does is it gives a cleaner uh, transmission loss, uh, and 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 uh, it gives a much cleaner transmission loss. Now, if we were to look at the refraction loss for the same case. Uh, when we when we have a bigger probe without any shields, uh, as you start going higher, so it's better at the lower speeds. But when you start going higher and higher speeds, you also see that there is a mismatch in between our uh, in in the reflection loss in between the tip side and the tail side of the probe. But when you have a ground shield around it, it kind of it's all, it's overlapping with each other, which means your reflection loss on both the tip and the tail is 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 almost the same value. And and I think that gives us a another advantage. So at 40 gigahertz, you actually are able to achieve a reflection loss of minus 10 dB uh, by adding more shields around it. <clears throat> Uh, uh, the, yesterday, Dave brought up a uh, good point that when you burn probes and, and you replace them, they're expensive. So that's that's the other advantage of our technology uh, is is we uh, these probes are very easy to repair uh, on the customer uh, with very minimal training. So the customer with this uni actual advantage of our probe, the customer can actually uh, the, replace the probes in the field with some minimal training provided by our uh, apps team. And uh, basically, they. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, all they have to do is they they just have to, uh, put, like we see in the second picture, just pull out the probe and just put a next uh, probe into it. And what that does is it helps save value, valuable time in production and thus the cost for our uh, end user and the customer. <clears throat> so uh, just to summarize uh, uh, some of the challenges uh, that we see uh, on the on the test uh, on the vendor side when it comes to these high high consumption. Uh, high power consumption chips and testing of those and acting as those as an interface in terms of current temperature uh, pin con parallelism. Uh, I think we uh, we can <clears throat> Uh, we basically have a very innovative solution that can uh, help achieve all of those uh, depending on the end user requirement. Uh, and also uh, now some of us might wonder what happens when you have a hybrid probe bed and you have to uh, replace probes in the field. It's, it's exactly the same. There is no difference. It's you just take a, uh, uh, we, we supply our customers with, uh, with the two different kinds of probes. Uh, they can just replace uh, whichever probe they want in the field. It's the exact same process. There is no difference in the field. And that, that's what uh, helps uh, some of our customers achieve a good performance in terms of speed, uh, better uh, good performance in terms of uh, uh, current and at, even at higher temperatures. So that, uh, and, and just to kind of summarize uh, some of those, uh, uh, some of those challenges that we see in the field. Thank you, Karim. Um, I can say I've learned a number of things here and, and I really appreciate uh, um, some of the technology you're bringing to bear. Um, I have to question though, can people really replace single pogos with a 60 micron pitch? 
Good question. And and yes, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, we have actually had a customer who actually built a 60 micron pitch. Uh, actually, they replace all the probes themselves in the field. That's right. Yep. Wow. Yeah, somebody has really stable hands and or some mechanics. Um, CCC numbers, I think we all know, are specified at ambient temperature. What happens as temperatures rise? Uh, is there derating? What's your experience? Uh, based on uh, what we have seen in the field and our internal testing, as uh, you know, as the as the temperatures uh, rise, yes, the CCC of the probe re reduces. Uh, but uh, that's where we uh, perform those optimization and the guide plate uh, graph that I had shown in. Sorry. I'm going to go back. Uh, but that's where we uh, kind of perform some uh, optimization in, uh, in our probe at stack up to kind of uh, uh, see, you know, what, was, what would be the ideal stack up at higher temperature to, to at least achieve a better CCC. Yeah. So, so what happens when people exceed the CCC? I mean, I, I know we don't, uh, you know, I work hard on making sure they don't. <laughs> but real world things happen. I mean, what what's what are the breaking points? Uh, good. Uh, yeah, that that's uh, that's right. So once we actually cross the CCC, there is a twenty percent reduction in force of the probe, and at that point, you basically uh, have a probe which uh, which kind of uh, you, you know you might see some kind of uh, uh, contact issues, and you might see discoloration on the tips, and and the springs might get yeah burned. So that that's the point where you're actually uh, the the probe cannot be much of use after that. So really, it's a hard limit, in your opinion. Full stop. Right, and 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 that's why uh, we actually recommend a uh, we actually recommend our customers with uh, with a uh, with a Mac uh, with a Mac number on it. So that Mac is Mac is basically the maximum allowable limit of the probe. And and the way we design our probe bed is we look at the Mac of the probe and the end user requirement, and then we design so that so that there's still a gap between the Mac and the CCC. Oh, I love this last comment. Replacing 60 micron probes is possible. You just have to drink less alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comment. <laughs> um, you you won't believe, but we actually have people. Uh, so so while I was kind of showing you uh, our three piece assembly, we actually have people who manually assemble 60 micron pitch probes. So they put three wow. pieces together manually. So. <laughs> wow. Um, you, you didn't talk to contact resistance. Uh, do you have any feel for how contact resistance uh, uh, endures over uh, plunges? Uh, so, uh, sorry, can you repeat the last part? I didn't catch that. Contact resistance, uh, you know, it tends to grow over time. And I'm wondering if, if you have any feeling for what your target contact resistance is at, at, at day one and over, you know, 10,000 million uh, pushdowns. So, uh, so yeah, uh, so we, we basically internally uh, test our probes for uh, more than 1 million test dunks, both at uh, all three temperatures. And, and what, what I have observed is uh, you know, there's a, uh, you know, when you start going to a higher and lower temperature, you might see some uh, contact resistance uh, moving up a little bit. But then when you optimize your cleaning recipe, we kind of recommend some of our customers a cleaning recipe. I think the, the average and the standard deviation, I would say, of that uh, contact resistance uh, remains uh, pretty constant over over the period of lifetime okay i think that's um hey hey good hey dave rob here. so one quick question for karan hey, hey, ahead, karan, so so yes thank you how would you clean these what what, what kind of cleaning method do you online so uh, we have uh, different recommendations for the cleaning, uh, online cleaning, uh, depending on the tip side. So for example, if you have a uh, flat tip, we, we usually uh, recommend uh, using a octagonal scrub method. And then if you have a, uh, if you have a pointed or rounded tip for pla flat pad applications, we recommend using a uh, Z, uh, up and down Z, Z motion for cleaning. Okay. Okay. I think we're at the bottom or the top of the hour. And, and I really want to thank Karen for uh, a good presentation. Certainly, as I said, I learned a few things and I'm sure everyone else did. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Adventist, Omcor, Indium, Form Factor, and Nidic SVTCL. Uh, Adventist, a global leader in ATE uh, with advanced nanotechnology products supporting leading edge devices with a global workforce in 50 countries and eco-friendly policies. Uh, Omcor, um, providing OSAT uh, 
advanced engineering and package leadership in their technology and quality, of course, in execution automation and uh, starting with quality and a service design and test through drop ship with a global manufacturing footprint, but local sales and support. And Indium, the premier assembly materials uh, designer and manufacturer of thermal interface materials. We did talk a lot about TIMS today, but they have a wide range of them. Uh, solder paste, fluxes, preforms, and uh, metals and compounds. So I'd like to thank all the sponsors for making this event possible. And please uh, thank them when you talk to them so that they know that they are appreciated. I wish everyone a good day and look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. So thank you.